Hey guys, Christopher Green, alternative media television, hard hitting and in your face. You know, a subject that we don't often want to think about, but is a hardcore truth and hardcore reality that we need, and you tuning in, need to prepare for, is there are terrorist cells all across the United States from sea to shining sea, all the way from the west to the east coast, awaiting activation in America at any moment, God forbid. And we continue to see this on a daily basis, propelled by the hate and the vitriol of the fake news CNN, MSNBC, and Fox, doesn't matter if it's left or right, it's bought and paid for, it's owned by the same large multinational, non-tax-paying corporations. It's the same thing. It's, it's one and the same. And it's meant to keep you divided, to keep all of us fighting each other. Unfortunately, although this is their sick intention, are propelling these duplicate attacks and these copycat killers like we just recently saw at this synagogue shooting. Here we have a suspect, NBC7 in San Diego and Poway, and also <clears throat> a lesser reported, I can't even find it, because they, they'll never report on it if it's Christians targeted. And by the way, dozens and hundreds of Christians are slaughtered on a monthly basis, and that's a conservative estimate for believing in the truth that is Jesus Christ. And notice how Barack Obama and all these people covered up, and they wouldn't even address the Sri Lanka attack, which attacked these very high-class five-star hotels. Many of you probably know there was a billionaire that lost, tragically, I think three of his children at one of these resort locations. But in addition to that, specifically targeted the Christian faith and those that believe in Jesus Christ and bombed, killing 290 people and wounding hundreds more. But again, what is so tragic about this is this is being propelled by the fake news, okay, by CNN. And now we're getting these copycat killers after copycat killers on a regular basis. And what you need to understand, what we need to understand, is the rising, growing threat in America as a result of illegal immigration. Again, we are pro-immigration, but illegal immigration is not only bringing in disease into this great country, the United States of America, but it is also bringing with it terror, not to mention propping up a very large debt Ponzi scheme that's going to collapse as well. And I'll get to that in a moment. So this is a very, very serious risk. And this ties directly into your Second Amendment, by the way, and what I believe the powers that be and the elites intend through a series of events to, again, and the ultimate goal is to go after you-know-what. I don't think I need to say it. But all I will say is that the Second Amendment is under attack. And it ties in directly to these, God forbid, terrorist sleeper cells all over America. So, then, so the next time you hear this rhetoric on the mainstream boob tube about how, you know, it's the right thing to just let in a bunch of illegal immigrants that aren't vetted, that are carrying diseases like the measles, of which they're encouraging draconian vaccinations right now and then censoring the truth on it, we can't even talk about it. Think about not just the disease, but the terrorism that it's actually bringing in. Now, there was actually a very important meeting, not really a speech, but just kind of an off-the-cuff event with Vladimir Putin, which I'm going to play in a minute, who many around the world admire. They admire Putin because he's very direct, kind of like Trump. He's considered a strong man. And he does everything it takes to preserve unity in his country and also to preserve its people, its culture, and its common religion. Because again, without common ground, what you have is division. Okay, It's, it's not called the divided states of America for a reason. 
It's called the United States of America for a reason. I'm going to read to you a little history, a quote from history from Samuel Adams in a moment. That's what keeps a nation strong. If you want to conquer a nation, what you do is you open up its borders, just like they've done. They de you decapitate it financially. You decapitate its financial resources, and what you end up getting is Rome burning, which is exactly what's happening here in the United States. So I'm going to play this footage for just about a minute or so. This is Vladimir Putin, the Russian leader, stating that the U.S. is no longer a white Christian country anymore. We Europeans need to preserve our culture. Let me let this man speak for himself. Вот смотрите, что в мире происходит. Вот наш сосед слева. Это миллиард двести миллионов человек в Индии. В Китае полтора миллиарда человек. Соединенные Штаты, у них все больше и больше иммигрантов. И, насколько я понимаю, белое население, христианское, уже в меньшинстве находится. Конечно. В мире происходит. Вот наш сосед слева. Это миллиард двести миллионов человек в Индии. В Китае полтора миллиарда человек. Соединенные Штаты, у них все больше и больше иммигрантов. И, насколько я понимаю, белое население, христианское, уже в меньшинстве находится. Конечно. Ну, это, вот вы говорите, конечно, это совсем недавно изменение. Белое христианское население оказалось в меньшинстве, уже меньше 50%. Я о чем говорю? О том, что в мире происходят очень серьезные глобальные изменения. Я сейчас не говорю, плохо ли это, хорошо. Просто изменения происходят глобальные. Значит, Россия, вы сказали, это огромное пространство, так и есть. Вот от западных границ до восточных, это евразийское пространство. Но с точки зрения культуры, даже языка, группы языка, да? история, это, безусловно, прежде всего все европейское пространство, имея в виду, что оно населено людьми, носителями этой культуры. Вот я почему это говорю? Потому что для того, чтобы мы в качестве какого-то значимого, сейчас не говорю, не говорю там не про военную, не про какую другую статус, а, а значимого центра э, в мире оставались, нам нужно это все сохранить. Конечно. Нужно не делить все по национальным квартирам и не оглядываться в прошлое. На, э, все время вспоминать. Окей, okay, so hopefully you caught the gist of that as I was moving that around a little bit, but basically Vladimir Putin in a nutshell sums up the centrality of the problem here in America is that we no longer have a common culture, we no longer have common ground, and we are absolutely divided. And he goes on to say that, well, you know, I'm not saying this is good or bad, although I think we know where he stands. He's just telling us that massive changes are occurring in the West. So the point of this being is while massive changes are occurring in the West, we are no longer a predominantly white Christian nation here in America, the rest of the world, or at least those smart countries like Russia, are actually doing everything in their power to preserve their unity, to preserve their uniformity, to preserve their actual cohesiveness. And of course, we see this in China as well, which is making them such a rising empire, which through the ages has risen and fallen. It's important to keep in mind that the United States has not been long, been around that long. Now, I want to go and read you a quote from Samuel Adams, and it's a shame how dumbed down Americans are. They don't know their history at all. They learn dates and random facts, but they don't know how to apply the knowledge, and they don't really understand context in these kinds of things. But I thought that this was a fabulous quote most people, when they think of Samuel Adams, they think of the, the beer, right? I mean, that's how dumbed down Americans are. Nothing wrong with drinking a good beer, but when they hear Samuel Adams, they think of a beer and they don't think of the revolutionary who risked his life along with other individuals to free America from British colonial rule. Now, when Samuel Adams was faced with death, 
he was faced with potential hanging by the king for demanding that British armed soldiers leave what was uh, the attempt was uh, to be a free America and the 13 colonies at a time. He said this to the messenger who brought a message to him that said, hey, if you fall in line, Samuel Adams, we will, uh, the king will forgive you back in England and will even bribe you and give you a bunch of money. Or if you don't take our bribe and fall in the line, and in that case, the king would forgive you, we'll hang you from the neck, from the gallows, so to speak, along with the others. And this is how Samuel Adams, this great man at the time, responded, quote, Then you may tell Governor Gage that I trust I have long since made my peace with the king of kings. No personal consideration shall induce me to abandon the righteous cause of my country. And tell Governor Gage it is the advice of Samuel Adams to him no longer to insult the feelings of an exasperated people. Now, those words are pretty amazing, and I want to read that first sentence again. This is when he was again faced with imminent potential death and hanging by the king, while at the same time they were trying to bribe him so that he would uh, actually not pursue the interests of a free America. He said, Then you may tell Governor Gage that I trust I have long since made my peace with the king of kings. The king of kings. God, Jesus Christ, and again, tying this back into our nation, founded under white Christianity, whether or not you like it or not. Now, these attacks, as I've said, uh, have continued to occur with increasing frequency. And the fake news mainstream media, of course, is intentionally, this is my belief and my opinion, intentionally creating copycat killers, which is why they're giving so much exposure to it. And again, this is a part of the divide and conquer tactics being used to destroy this great country from the inside out. So the point here that I, that I need you to understand, and I think that you should, and put a comment in the comment box below, is in my opinion, and God forbid, I mean, this is absolutely terrible, this is what the powers and be have in store. In fact, one of the elusive, elusive figures, I'll probably mispronounce his name, al-Baghdadi, I think is how you say it, the, uh, one of the main leaders of ISIS that supposedly wasn't, was killed and wasn't alive anymore, suddenly is showing up in videotape again. So it's kind of the, the ooga booga boogeyman, Osama bin Laden syndrome again, where they're going to use this as a mechanism of fear and control. So that's the point that I wanted to make with that. Also in the news, Donald Trump is calling for more stimulus. In fact, the economy is allegedly so good through artificial trillion-dollar bailouts and 0% interest rates going on for a decade in a straight-shot rocket ship vertical parabolic move. I'll show you the chart here in a minute. Things are so great that instead of raising interest rates after this parabolic shift here, where you see the S&P 500 literally goes straight up like a rocket ship without any kind of recession and any kind of pullback for going on almost 11 years now. Instead of doing what the Federal Reserve said it was going to do, right, get rid of the bailouts, they're actually considering more bailouts, just like we told you that they would. More quantitative easing, negative interest rates, further rate cuts, further funny money, and further stimulus with the full intention of destroying the dollar, collapsing, ultimately, real tangible wealth here in our nation, starting a world war, okay, whoever you believe, you know, what these forces at work are doesn't really matter, and then blaming that world war for the collapse as the ultimate reset of America's debt. Okay, I've talked about this ad nauseum for almost going on now, a generation. So let's go to this article real quick. Donald Trump calls on Fed to cut rates by 1%, urges more quantitative easing. He intensified his pressure on the Federal Reserve, calling for a one-point rate cut and more quantitative easing. So if anyone tells you the economy is doing great, tell them they're full of it. Because if it was, they'd raise interest rates. 
And the takeaway from this is they're never, ever going to raise interest rates, ever, in your lifetime. What they're, do, what they're going to do is start a war first, collapse the dollar, which is in process now, cause inflation, if not hyperinflation, and tax the middle and lower classes through that inflation tax. So the president compares the Fed unfavorably to China's central bank and says more stimulus would see the U.S. economy go up like a rocket. Here are the tweets that Donald Trump put out. China is adding great stimulus to its economy while at the same time keeping interest rates low. Our Federal Reserve has incessantly lifted interest rates. No, they haven't. They've barely lifted them. We're at 2.5% Fed funds rate. That's absolutely nothing. They're essentially still at zero. Though inflation is very low. That's not true. Inflation is very high. Just look at home prices. Look at the prices. Gas is actually rising now. All commodities, cost of living, luxury items, necessity items, everything's going up, up, up to the moon. Um, we see this with real estate prices, for example, outpacing real wages and income, just like they did before the last collapse in 2008 and 2009, which, by the way, I warned thousands of clients of, pulled all of my personal assets out of the stock market prior to the collapse, urged everybody that I knew to do that. Uh, for those of you that know, some of you probably don't know, but I worked for Merrill Lynch at the time as a broker. That's where my background is. And it's one of the reasons why I picked up a camera and started broadcasting, bring the truth to the American people. So this, it's a sham and it's a lie. And then he continues again, up like a rocket if we did some lowering of rates. So basically, if we give more crack to the hooker, uh, that is the prostitute of America, the Federal Reserve and the central bank, then uh, prices will go up. Well, he's, he's right about that. They will. But the consequence is the dollars in your pocket get weaker. It means you get poor. And it means the only people that get richer are the ones that actually own tangible assets or they own cash flow assets or they own things that will keep up with inflation. So, you know, look, if they cause hyperinflation, <coughs> and hyperinflation is 20% plus a year, 100% a year like in Venezuela, we see how it's worked out over there. It doesn't matter if you're getting a huge return on the stock market if you're just keeping up with inflation. So the point here is you guys want to prepare. Now, you do not want to wait. And I'm just telling you from experience, I mean, just take a look at the chart for yourself. Every seven to 10 years, there is a market cycle. We have gone straight up for 10, going on 11. So what we have ahead, and this is just the truth, these are just fundamental facts, is a massive economic depression. Unlike anything that you have ever seen, it is going to be far worse than 2008 and 2009. And you need to take this moment in time as a blessing as a blessing, but more importantly, a time to take action, get your ducks in a row, and prepare for the worst. Now, a great way to do this, and it's absolutely free, this is the beauty of it, is I put together a comprehensive free PDF kit here at AMTV. All you have to do is click the link below, download the free PDF, you fill out a little information to get the guide, and boom, you'll get this Absolutely free, 24-page report. And I put a lot of elbow grease and work into this, my team and myself. will teach you what you need to know on how to profit with gold and silver today. Okay, you can print this out. You can put it on your refrigerator. It will teach you how to protect you and your family from financial collapse, inflation, and currency disruption. I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek here, but you do have to click the link below to get all of this. I go through some alarming trends. I talk about inflation versus deflation, what I think we're going to get. I relay some very critical facts. I talk about what my conclusion is, what this means for your family, how to prepare for it. Most importantly, we put together a strategy for you with some key points. Again, education is key. Knowledge is power through the correct application and direct direction of that knowledge. And I go over some common features and advanced topics of bullion, owning coins, where I think prices are going. I talk about liquidity, things that you should avoid. I give you a recommendation. I talk about IRAs and some of these other products I think that you should consider. Also go over some charts, et cetera. There's a lot of information here. I just showed you a couple pages of it. So click the link below right now. It'll take you to our landing page. Get the guide. 
it's free. What you do with the knowledge ultimately is up to you. But I'm urging you to prepare in every way possible, in every humanly way possible, not just for the financial collapse and the economic depression ahead, which could happen at any moment now. Just pull up a chart for yourself. Here we're looking at a chart from 1950 to 2016. Notice after every pop, we get a massive collapse. We had one in 2001 right here. This was after the stock tech bubble, the dot-com. This was after the 2008-2009 bubble. And then look at this extraordinary manipulation, this extraordinary bailout Federal Reserve manipulation, which will result, in my opinion, in brand new lows and an economic crisis so severe, we have never seen it before, that the only thing that they can blame it on is war, a debt jubilee, and a total economic reset. So take advantage of that offer and also understand and know that the frequency of these events in America and this very real threat of terrorist sleeper cells waiting, willing, and able to be activated at any time poses a giant threat to you and your family. Also understand that the mainstream media here, the fake news, truly is the enemy of the American people. And they are only helping to propel copycat incidents where they won't even call. They won't even call these attacks. The one here at Sri Lanka, an attack on Christians, but instead Obama and other radicals call it an attack on Easter worshipers. Because again, semantics are very important. And just like Vladimir Putin pointed out in this video I played for you, because he's a very smart man, he's very in tune, and many consider him to be a great, great leader. The U.S. is no longer a white Christian country. Okay, why they, why they, Europeans and Russians, are preserving their culture, because unity is strength. That's just the truth. Disunity is not strength. It's chaos. It's division. And it's exactly what our leadership wants. So while we have illegal immigrants pouring over the border and then stealing from the coffers of innocent tax-paying Americans that are suffering at the hands of the powers that be. Other smart, smart nations like Russia, China, and India, America's principal, well, this is just what the mainstream media tells us, enemies rises as this imposing giant and threat as we all prep for the inevitability of these biblical events and a world war. And ultimately, a debt jubilee, which is exactly why I recommend gold and again, this is finan not financial or investment advice. Pre please read our disclaimers and disclosures at amtbgold.com. But I also incessantly, vigorously, daily recommend diversification out of the U.S. dollar into things like gold and also Bitcoin and other blockchain assets. Not to mention land, water, beans, guns, bullets, and most importantly, what you know, your own education and your tangible real life skill sets. Get it out everywhere. Thank you so much. Please like and share this video. God bless each and every one of you tuning in. And I'll finish with Samuel Adams quote once again. Then you may tell Governor Gage that I trust I have long since made my peace with the King of Kings. No personal consideration shall induce me to abandon the righteous cause of my country and tell Governor Gage it is the advice of Samuel Adams to him no longer to insult the feelings of an exasperated American people.